Even though we bought this phone as soon as it went on sale, the time to test it was still a bit short. We want to get to know the phone in detail as much as possible, so we will split this full review into two parts, one just about photography, the other for everything else. After all, it takes time to shoot good photos and dive deep into the science and effort behind it. In this video, we will show all the details except the camera. Let's see how the Xiaomi 13 Ultra really performs as a flagship phone. Xiaomi 13 Ultra has been released for a few days now. I don't know if you guys have gotten used to the design. I have anyway. If you think of it as a camera, it's actually quite impressive. With a gold lens ring, white leather texture, and metal frame on both sides, this could be your first Leica camera without being too expensive. But as a phone, I can hardly say it looks good. I'm not going to criticize its weight or thickness either because flagship phones from other brands are also the same. This unusual frame doesn't pinch your hand as much as it looks and it has an extra benefit. Because it extends to the back panel, it completely wraps around the four corners. This way the vegan leather won't be worn down easily. The phone sacrifices too much for the large camera module and the back panel is designed with a slope in order to look like it's not bulging too much. If you have a big hands, chances are your fingers will always touch the camera module and it takes time to get used to it. The maximum thickness of the camera area has reached 1.5 cm. This must be annoying to many people. The most exciting thing about the 13 Ultra is that USB has finally been upgraded to 3.2 Gen 1. With a theoretical maximum speed of 5 Gbps and support video output, Thank goodness, the wish I made in the 12S Ultra review has finally come true. I'm alive and well, and Xiaomi is finally using USB 3.2. Xiaomi 13 Ultra does not use the top Samsung panel as a screen this time. TCL, as a perennial partner of Xiaomi, offered its latest C7 panel for the 13 Ultra. This is the first 2K resolution and LTPO supported panel made by Chinese screen manufacturer, which is as responsive and theoretically power saving as the screens we've used before. LTPO is as responsive as some top screens out there, but not quite effective at low brightness, which is the same in Samsung screen. What's different is that the 13 Ultra can use DC dimming at high brightness and the 1920Hz PWM dimming at low brightness. It doesn't require you to turn on any switches. People who are fan to low frequency PWM dimming should be very aesthetic to see it on flagship phone. The 13 Ultra has a very bright screen, peak brightness 2600 nit, 1200 nit full screen brightness, but this happens only if there's a bright light. If you're indoors, the maximum manual full screen brightness is only 500 nits. This is an old Xiaomi phone problem, but the good news is that HDR video will not be affected, not a big problem. When you click into color scheme settings, you will find that the default setting is no longer vivid mode. This default original color pro mode refers to the CIE 2015 standard of tuning. Any device with a different spectrum that follows this standard will still display the same color. Simply put, the devices that use a unified standard look exactly the same. The protective glass is also Corning Victus, and there really isn't much else to complain about it. This time, unlike the Mi 10 Ultra, TCL has really done its best, and you can really trust the Chinese display one more time. Let's talk about the performance that few people pay attention to on this phone. Although it isn't the main selling point of 13 Ultra, testing is still essential. A few benchmarks show that the peak performance is as good as any other flagship phones, but it cannot last long. Although Xiaomi has designed a new cooling system for the camera and motherboard design is non-stack, the results don't seem to be good. You can clearly see in the game that the full power output won't last long. 7 minutes later, the frame rate was slowly dropped and eventually stayed at around 47 fps. Even so, the power consumption and temperature are quite high, especially the frame temperature. Because the metal has good thermal conductivity, you will feel this area is particularly hot. The resolution of Genshin Impact on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is supported up to 864p, but at the same time, it requires more output for CPU and GPU. Plus, it's a 2K 120Hz screen, it is understandable that the power consumption and temperature are a little higher. Then I lowered the image quality and tested it again, and it performed much better. The temperature and the power consumption has become lower, and the gaming experience is smooth and stable. When reviewing a flagship phone that focuses on photography, I generally lower the standard of gaming performance, because whether it's iPhone or Samsung, Vivo or Oppo, their flagship phones are about the same level, or worse than I expected. Compared to 12S Ultra, one obvious change is the disappearance of the Harman Kardon logo, but it does not mean that the sound quality is worse. Personally, I even think the 13 Ultra is instead the better one. 
The main difference is the sound stage. The 13 Ultra will have a larger sound stage and it will not sound too flat. I'll put the speaker test in the end part of the video and you can listen to it for yourself. Xiaomi's flagship phone has finally said goodbye to 67 watt charging. Well, 90 watt isn't a particularly fast charging speed either. It's commendable to see such progress. 5 minutes to charge 22% and 40 minutes to fill. Better life didn't surprise us either. After all, this 2K 120Hz screen is really power hungry. So as for charging, it's kind of just above the pass line. The 90 watt charger is still with a USB-A port and there are a few charging protocols. But the cable is still USB 2.0. Bro, your phone is already USB 3.2. Why do you still use 2.0 cable? It seems my new wish this year is to see USB 3.0 cable on Xiaomi phone before I die. It can reach 23 watt using a third-party PD charger on the 13 Ultra, which is relatively better compared to other Chinese brands. But the wireless charging coil is forced to move downer because of the larger camera module, so not all wireless charging docks are supported. At least not with my Xiaomi 30 watt wireless charging dock. As a flagship phone, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is an average performer. It's not much an upgrade over the 12s Ultra, but perhaps the more unique design is its biggest upgrade. Anyway, it is unfair to review a flagship phone without talking about a camera, so I'm not going to jump into conclusions here yet. Please wait until I take some photos with this phone, and I will tell you what it's really good at. I'm Will from Kingston, China, and we'll see you in part two. Silhouette. I'm getting strong